Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. We're here talking with uh, Rick Fairless at Stroker Dallas, and we're in Dallas, Texas, and you're joining Rick in his office. Rick, glad to see you again. You too. I know that you've, you've been in this business a long time, and we just want to cover some things with some people, because uh, we get all these questions, and people want to know a little bit more about Rick. What people? What people? All the people who love you, that they see you at all these shows. Oh, my, sis talk. my sister and my mother? Yeah, the, well, those two have inquired. You, your mom, what she, what she wanted to know was, we can't do that on camera. Yeah. So, um, and Susan had questions, but we're not going to go there either. Uh, but tell us just a little bit about the background, because these people that go to these shows, they see your bikes, they see you, they never get to talk to you. And, you know, and then they... God, I wish I could talk to Rick Ferris and find out a little bit more about him personally. Uh, tell us what brought you into all this and, and what made you uh, come to this point in your life and to be such the icon that you are across the country. I don't know about the icon part, but, you know, I, I worked for the Glidden Paint Company for 20 years and uh, I decided to retire after 20 and open my own motorcycle shop and you know, I just was never happy with where I was. I always was like the, the big fat guy in the in the uh, buffet line. I always wanted more on my plate, more on my plate. And problem is, sometimes I get more on my plate than I can do. Now's one of those times, you know. And it's just you get something accomplished, and you 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 grow, and you go to the next level, and you think you can do something, and then you do your best to make it happen. Well, you've got a tremendous work ethic. You, you, you kind of hang out here every now and then. You're at the shop occasionally, I hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot better than that. Um, you're here, you open this place up, and you close it up. I call it turning the key both ways. Turning the key both ways. Yep, I turn it coming in and turn it going out. And you're always here. Unless I'm at a motorcycle rally somewhere. But then you're working still. Yeah. We see you at the shows all over. We just saw you down at the Lone Star Rally. And a lot of people think that these rallies are a lot of fun. But for guys like you, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You and gotta get everything Sometimes corrupt. it gets to you, you know. I mean, some people think I look older than my 35 years. Mm-hmm. Well, that could be. Um, yeah, you might be pushing late 30s. Yeah. So, I don't know how that works. Huh? But it's all good, you know, if you love what you do, you just do the best that you can and say your prayers at night and go on. It's all you can do. But you really do, though, uh, all joking aside, you really do stay here. I mean, you haven't had a day off in, well, I've known you eight years, but you haven't had a day off in that time I've known you. No, I don't take days off. Uh, so, you're always here. And uh, that's that shows a tremendous work ethic, and you're passing that along to your daughter, who's going to inherit this insane asylum, with all this beautiful array. So um, she hopes. She hopes. Mm -hmm. I may just sell it. <laughs> I'm willing to take a, a, a Roger Stallback rookie card and a six pack of Dr Pepper for it. Okay, we'll pass that along. Uh, it's it's always interesting to to talk with individuals like you. Uh, across the country from Miami to LA. Uh, we've had the privilege of talking to some wonderful people. Many of them are good friends in the business. Uh, but you have something that you do every day. I mean, it's almost like a religious ritual. And it's important to you. And it happens, and it doesn't make a difference if the Pope is in town. Uh, what happens between 11 and 12 o'clock around here for I, you? I take my wife to lunch every day at 11 o'clock. Mon that's Monday through Friday. She she works Monday through Friday, so every Monday through Friday we eat lunch from 11 to 12. You know, sometimes we go home and eat lunch. Sometimes we eat at a restaurant. You know, but uh, it's just been a ritual all these years, and we still do it every day. You know, on Saturdays and Sundays, I usually eat lunch right here at my office, or actually most of the time I don't eat lunch <laughs> on Saturdays and Sundays. I just keep working. Why do you, why do, you do that? You run a, a huge business here, uh, and things are happening here all the time. Why do you take an hour out of your day for that? Oh, I think just because 
it gets me out of here for an hour and it gets me with my wife and uh, you know that's important to me and it's important to her and you know sometimes it's uh, sometimes I think I have better things to do but at the end of the day I don't have anything better to do than to spend one hour a day with my wife like that you know because by the time I get home it's late and that routine is exactly the same as all my other routines. I walk in the door at 7.30 and she has supper on the table. I eat supper, we do the dishes. By eight o'clock she's in bed and I sit there and pet the dog and watch TV till about nine and then I'm in bed. And then I get up at 3.15 every morning and doesn't matter if it's Tuesday or Saturday or Sunday or whatever day it is. 3.15 I get up, I go to the gym, I work out, I come straight to work, and then all's the same. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of fun. You've got a routine. Who said fun was anywhere in there? Well, you're not, you're well, something you about find fun a job that you like, you never have to work a day in your life. It ain't fun, though. <laughs> Fun's not the word. You really do work hard, and as, as the owner of a, a, as a destination, Right. There are individuals who own motorcycle dealerships. They don't put in near the time that you do, nor the commitment, nor are their staff as dedicated as, as your folks are here. They're probably smarter than me. They, they, they probably have things figured out better than I do, would be my guess. I'm trying, but it's the only way I know how to do it. Well, apparently you're succeeding quite well because you're known everywhere. We can be in Miami or LA or on the Eastern Seaboard somewhere, and there's somebody with one of your shirts on. Well, that's a good thing. And you know as well as I do, those shirts don't blend in in a crowd. No. Nope. Whether you're in, in San Francisco or Miami, those shirts don't blend in. So you know exactly where that person's been. And when you ask them, I guess you've been to Strokers in Dallas. They display that thing like they're displaying you know, a blessing from the Pope. I've been to Strokers, Dallas, you know. This well, place is a destination. It's, we're lucky enough to have built a good reputation, and, and we get people in here every day from all over the country, and we even get people in here from all over the world, you know, and it's always humbling to me that, you know, somebody came from Pittsburgh or Florida or whatever, and, you know, and I always say, what brings you to Dallas? We came to see you came to see strokers you know and that's always very humbling well people do that because they have a lot of respect for you the strokers name and what you've done not only in television and radio uh, but the bikes that you've built the Janus bike all those the Beatles bikes those are legendary bikes and people look at those and and you know working for Glidden the paint company for 20 years you know, they say, well, undoubtedly you just spilled a bunch of paint on the bike or something. Those are bikes just didn't come about. You spent multiple hours on those bikes individually. Yeah, it's a, it's a process. You know, I mean, you, you can't do the same thing over and over again. So you, you try to reinvent yourself and to reinvent a bike, but still keep your style, you know, so we just try to we just try to, you know, do, I mean, if a customer wants a, a, a solid black bike, we do whatever the customer wants. When you see the wild, crazy stuff, that's either on one of my personal bikes or a customer has allowed me to take my vision on their bike. Talking about the liberty that you have in creating and your creative abilities, you're starting a whole new product line of things. Tell us a little bit about that. We are, I started the company about a year ago called Rick Fairless Custom Parts, and we are designing and producing parts for Victory and Harley Davidson motorcycles. So far this first year, we have mainly been concentrating on the Victories, and, uh, and it's going good, and we're making some headway, and we're going we're gonna to get the, uh, some of the parts in some of the bigger catalogs. And we're just going to continue to try to come up with innovative new parts. Give us a sneak peek. What are, what are some of the parts you're working on? Uh, that you already have out. Well, some of the stuff we already have out is like a uh, 
uh, a break reservoir for the for the cross country and the crossroads, which are victories. That's the most popular model. That it's a chrome finned piece instead of the little plastic piece with the plastic lid on it. You know, we're making some really cool exhaust tips right. that go on the on the stock exhaust system. Uh, the victories have cambo tensioner covers, cambo tensioner adjusters on the side of each cylinder. We make a cool cover that blends in with the cylinder. We're making some crossover heat shields for the exhaust. It's just a bunch of parts that mostly of which can be installed easily in your garage. And that's kind of what we're concentrating on. But people don't realize how much time it takes and how expensive it is. You know, for us to make a part, we have to come up with an idea first, then we have to design it, then we have to figure out if this is something that we think will sell, is this something that we think can easily be made, then we make a prototype and we test the bejeevers out of it, then you always find something that you wish you would have did done differently or redesign it and then you you get it to where you love it and you send it to the machine shop and they say oh no you can't do that you got to make this or that's got that, that's way too you go through all that process next thing you know you're months literally months and months down the road then you come up with the thing and you know it's it's the parts cost you 40 bucks to make and then you know, to, to to retail it, how you gonna how you gonna make any money? You know, if it costs you forty bucks, then you got to go chrome it or paint it or powder coat it or whatever. And it's just a, you know, it's just part of that vicious cycle that that life is. You know, you just figure out. You may we may work on something for months, and then come to the conclusion that and that, that ain't gonna work, or it's a great product. We'll never sell them. It's too expensive to manufacture. Maybe that's why nobody makes this certain piece because it's too expensive to make. Well, another great inventor who experimented with a lot of things that didn't work, Thomas Edison. Right. And that's kind of like you with motorcycles. You'll experiment with a lot of things until you really find the one that really will work and the light bulb comes on. The light bulb's always on, it just runs dim sometimes. My mom always said I was kind of a dimwit. Now, how do people get the parts? If, if you got a victory, you got a bike, and you want to find the parts, how do they get? How do they find the, them? The best way is if you if you've got a victory, you can go to my website, StrokersDallas.com. Okay. On the home page, you'll see a section that says Parts. Run your mouse over Parts. There'll be a drop down, and it'll say RF Custom Vic Parts. Okay. Click on that, and it's got it's got the parts. It, I'd say it's got all of our parts on it, but we're always adding new stuff, so it ha it'll be the latest updated stuff will be on there. And it, we usually have six to ten pictures of the part and what the part looks like installed, and in some cases a before and after shot of it. Okay, go to Stoker's Dallas, your home page. Yeah. Find the, the link that says parts, RF. I know that has a meaning, we won't have to go down there. But find that link, and you'll find it right you there. You don't know what the RF stands for? I think it's like Rat Fink or something, isn't it? No. What is it? Like Rick Fairless? Ah, look at you, Jimmy, <laughs> boy. You caught right on.